What's cracking, y'all? Once again, I am Nick Danger, and you are now tuned in to Art of Envy. Welcome to my channel, and thanks for watching my video. Today, I want to talk about the sequencer of the MV 8800, the 3.5 version, and just the concepts. So, it's a superior sequencer, right? And it's because it's linear, pattern based, and phrase step recording all in one sequencer. And you can do everything with the sequencer running. This sequencer has to be one of the most flexible sequencers, even comparing to the modern day dog, right? So within all these modes together, you get also a myriad of, of uh, quantization options. So our qualitized options are off, grid, shuffle, and template. So let's go to grid. Grid is the one you know. You throw things on the grid, you can snap it to a grid. So it, it's always on the one. You have the strength. If you want it to be 95%, it's gonna be 95%. Then there's the resolution of the sequencer, which is by default at 480, but that's DAW-like, that's too much room. So you wanna go up to 80, between 80 and 160. My, my soft spot is, my, my sweet spot is uh, at 120. That's perfect for me. And that gets you within what most hardware is doing, right? Then there are the shuffle. Now the shuffle is like the swing on the MVC, only it's called shuffle. And it's gonna cut your, your um, DAW resolution or your sequencer resolution in half from you know 480 to 240 and you're gonna have a rate to deal with that's kind of off to the right of the screen that you can't see but it's a rate involved and I've, I've read that setting that at about 66% to start with is a good point and that's where mine is set then there are the templates now I don't know if they're shuffle templates or they're just templates from your ball from but as you can see there's a lot of options you have these 9 16th um, type templates. They all have four strengths. Low accent, high accent, low swing, high swing. The eighth templates right underneath, they have six of those and each of those have four strengths. Low accent, high accent, low swing, high swing. Then you have the Latin based templates just under that. There's two saucers, two axe ones, an axe two and then you have two sauces. And then other, underneath those, you have some random triplets, quintuplets, sextuplets, seven against the second quarter note. And this is the area that you have to pay attention to if you really wanna make some unique drums. Now, if you wanna stay trapped in the trap doing trap, that's fine. There's, a, uh, there's an antidote in the MV for that as well. It's called off and off, okay, so the resolution still matters here, so keep keep that in mind, that if you still have that high resolution, there's still a lot of room to mess up. But if you hit the off, and then you hit the shift versus uh, shift and roll, you want to come up with a cheat code. Check it out. And you're going to get this little screen over here. And this is where this is the cheat code you can't mess up on here so the best way to use this is like let's see on a track that okay so let me play while I'm doing this let me highlight the fact that usually when you're using the sequencer on the MV you can quantize the entire song or you can quantize track by track and that is also a beautiful thing because it can all this makes for the, the, the sequencer itself to be so flexible that it is it is impossible for you to run out of options almost like if you think that it sounds a certain way it's only because you didn't bend it's kind of like um the kid in the matrix there is no spoon you know because if you didn't bend 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 all the options inside here you only stopped halfway okay so if i hit shift and roll i come over my screen Okay, let's. All right, let's hear that. You can hear that. So, roll. All right. Roll the wheel to 240. On 60. The lower the number, the higher the roll. You 
and just keep going and go 30. You know what I mean? And that's as high as you're going to go. Let's go here. See, you can't mess up. And when the beat's going, you can be auditioning all these, which I'll show you in, you know, in another video. This is just a quick tip just to expose people who aren't exposed to it. If you're exposed to it, then you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take this screen down. And how does this play out sonically over, um, how does this play out sonically over in a, in a beat making session? Well, I got subtle ways to use it like this. Okay, so here is a little simple drum track. But as you can see, if I come down on the screen, right here, this track has that a template on it. This track is on the grid, but only on 95%, because the MV is just that accurate. Um, and then the the kick drum is a hundred percent on the grid now that's how I got this to sound like this now I could go back and show you what it sounded like before it wouldn't make much sense because you have this reference now so I'm saying that you could use all of these things as the thing is going so if I changed when I was auditioning this one Let's change it as the beat is in here. Let's change it to something else. We're going to change it to this. Swung the whole beat. Took it off. Look at that. You can hear it. sounds off and this is how you have to experiment with these things and I came to this one right now a note about the 95% to 100% right so this thing is really accurate so I say that to say that if you're using a resolution of anything uh, above 120 and you're going to do unquantized stuff without the shift without the cheat code you better be accurate because it's going to put it exactly where you put it and people don't understand that early on in the first MPC 3000 the 2000 XL you only had 96 ticks per quarter notes worth of resolution so it's less than this you know 20 something you know ticks per quarter notes less and other hardware had even less so this is a huge choice this is my sweet spot this is where I like to be but you see you got options depending on how accurate you are and what style of you that you're that you're doing right okay so right now I have a bunch of audio phrases all these are audio phrases these are not one shot these are patches so the MV's dexterity in the way it does things is like this. Each of these audio phrases I have up here as audio phrases. And they were sequenced by simply using the step, the phrase recorder in the step record environment. So you're going to hit shift record and boom, you're going to be fronted with that screen. And as you can see, you can do step time recording with either phrases or measures or even notes. You know what I mean? So you can do it, and I chose to do a phrase. And how that plays out is like, say if I was to bounce down to, say if I was to bounce down to track three, and I wanted another copy of this, then I would hit shift, record, and just hit it. And it's gonna lay it right down. See that? Laid it right down. Now I undo it, because I don't need that. And that's how I laid this entire song, right? As well as the patterns right so it will work the same way once you create a pattern track up here you create you a pattern track and you lay that track I usually lay my pattern tracks 
right as the, as the last audio track. So consider I'm only using one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm only using a couple of these audio tracks. I laid it right here, so that's fine. So that's step recording, real time recording of notes and MIDI and just tapping in beats down here within the Phantom, is which is where I put. I was the Phantom was where I came for all of my um, accents, all of my shakers and and stuff like that on the beat but the phrases are just like this now a word about step recording and the phrases and being able to nudge and stuff like that into you know so because you're, you're recording it as a um, as a phrase and not MIDI but it's super tight the way you can do it so as you can see I put these on the one right but if we go back a couple of measures right here there's a space and that's because this one had to be nudged back and it has the end it has to have that space right there now this is just the drum line so it's a totally different track but this particular one one let's go to the audio event pattern parameter as you can see I got this locked in near what the temple is the tempo is right this one not so much this one is not locked into the tempo it's at 100.86 and that's because that's the original uh, track with the swing and the swing it makes it get off at at 100 if I put the same uh, tempo that this is at uh, up here in this window the whole track gets off because of some kind of it's a it's a something I imported over from my MPC so I was able to what I did was I took everything else and put everything else off the off the quantize and just built around the track in those spaces everything else is off as you can see most of these parts are off now there are some parts that are on the grid but for the most part they're either on a shuffle or they're entirely off the quantization and this was all done in step recording mostly in order to put this together and left in linear mode the whole track just ends there's really no loops so Dar, let me just show you exactly what it sounds like stays together now you can hear the looseness but you can also hear as the loop comes back around it's right back on the one and that is just pointing out the dexterity of the MV uh, sequencer anyway for more MV content like this or in-depth analysis of actually what's inside your MV check out my YouTube channel man hit me in the comment section tell me what you thought later